Now there are many little ways in which you can improve your lawn tennis. Firstly, I would recommend you, if you are thinking of taking it up seriously, to start off with six lessons or so from a reliable coach. Then again, if you get the opportunity, do not fail to visit Wimbledon at championship time. More can be learned from the centre court stands during this exciting fortnight than in any other way. Another good method of improving yourself, once the details of a certain stroke have been mastered, is to round it off against the practice board. Be careful, though, not to confuse yourself by attempting to learn too much. Decide which is your weakest spot and concentrate on strengthening this. Probably it will be your back hand. An excellent motto for the beginner to adopt is to learn to hit first and to steady down afterwards. If you adopt the reverse, you may turn into a stonewaller like Salim, the Indian. This is sometimes a pain, but an unenjoyable way of playing. The stonewalling habit too, once acquired, is very difficult to get out of. Now at all costs, keep your eyes on the ball. See how Tilden glues his when returning service. Try it. An improvement you'll find will soon set in. Many simple smashes or volleys are missed through looking anywhere but at the ball. The next point to consider is to keep your racket head above the wrist. Even if you doubt the wisdom of this on the forehand, it must be done on the backhand and for volley. Watch Senorita de Alvarez and see how she holds her racket head up for all strokes. Be careful also to get well down to the ball. Your wrist in fact should be almost touching the ground when playing a low volley. For a forehand drive, the racket can be held in a straight line with the arm. Many well-known players, including Lacoste, as a matter of fact, do this. The handle should be gripped so that the palm of the hand is well behind it. Though whatever you do, remember to shift your hand round again for the back hand, or you will be in difficulties at once. At the start, I recommend you to keep your thumb up the handle for this stroke, though Tilden has his round. Your racket should be allowed to swing through to its full extent after hitting the ball, but do not bother about a long swing back. Control and time will be lost if you do. Pause for a second, as Miss Betty Nuttall does, before your racket actually hits the ball. Cochet is the highly successful exponent of this short swing back, and by it is able to return the ball in a flash. The rapid strides which lawn tennis has made of late years is chiefly due to early hitting. Give your opponent as little time as possible to make his stroke. Rocha, for instance, plays the ball so quickly that he is up at the net almost before it has bounced. Let your aim, therefore, be to hit the ball at the top of its bound, or even before. This is particularly applicable to the return of service. Perhaps you are not sure why you are told to stand sideways to the net. It is because if you stand square to it, only your arm can be used in playing the ball. By standing sideways, your whole body can be brought into action as well, and your weight accordingly swung through from one foot to the other. Susan Longlong is one of the few players since the war who have really carried this out. Good footwork is half the battle in lawn tennis. This is clearly demonstrated by Carol Cotillou, the famous professional, every time he goes onto the court. Footwork and anticipation always go hand in hand and can only be acquired by constant practice. Instinctively, you gradually begin to run and to go to the right spot. A less fleet-footed Barotra would be much easier to handle. It is in footwork above all else that Miss Wills would have to take second place to Susan Longlock. Now for the service. More than ever you must stand sideways to the net for this major stroke. And most important, throw the ball up between your head and left shoulder and a little in front of you. You must make a mechanical certainty of never varying your throw. 
cultivate two deliveries of about the same speed. Never mind an occasional double fault, but avoid like the plague the terribly hard hit first service with its inevitable feeble second. Hit the ball at the very top of your reach and never force the shot. Vary your service as the bowler does at cricket. Patterson has the most consistently good delivery in the world, but Tilden's cannonball is probably the fastest. Correct position is the key to good volley. Take a leaf out of the Frenchman's book and stand close up to the net when all you will have to do is to hit down. In a single, your aim must be to work your opponent out of position and to gain the net at the first opportunity for a finishing kill. In doubles, a pair should work as one man, their collective object being to obtain the attack. Be in the position as the hurt is once said to hit down and to force your opponents to hit up. Lastly, never despise the log, either as a means of attack or defense.